Hello everyone, Ratchmatch back with another episode of Raw Results for April 10th, 2017. If you guys do like, please leave one and subscribe. But, to get into this week's episode of Raw, it was the Superstar Shake-Up to shake things up, literally, across all the brands, with some superstars taking places and some superstars just remaining in places. Who moved to where? We'll find out in this episode. Okay, so our first uh, thing to open the, up the night was the intro video. And then Michael Cole welcomes everyone, blah, blah, blah. Then enters out of nowhere. Everybody thinking, you know, oh, it's John Cena. That's a big, uh, uh, you know, debut for Raw, but it turns out to be The Miz and Maurice just making fun of them, and I I like Miz and Maurice and everything, but, like, that feud's past them, and they need to move on to something else, like, I don't know, they should have started something with Nakamura, but he's on SmackDown, and Miz and Maurice are on Raw now, so, too bad. But then, uh, you know, Miz just, uh, making fun of Cena, the whole shtick, oh, I'm a robot, blah, blah, blah. Ambrose comes down, so he is now on Raw with his S.H.I.E.L.D. brothers, depending on what happens tomorrow. Don't know, but, you know, they're all on Raw now. So Dean Ambrose comes down, and then, uh, he's like, oh, he's, he thinks Miz is John Cena, but... It's not. It's actually me. It's like, oh man, John Cena is such an honor to meet you. Oh man, I'm so happy you beat up Miz at WrestleMania and won. He's such a loser. And, you know, your movies are great, but not so great because uh, Marine 5 is going to suck and blah, blah, blah. Then Miz took it off. It's like, Dean, Dean, I'm not John Cena. And then Dean's all like, oh, oh, okay, well, that's good. And then he gave him Dirty Deeds, and yeah. So that set up a match for later in the night. Then, after that... Uh, hold on. So, oh yeah, and uh, another thing mentioned. Both titles are on one brand. So there's uh, IC and US titles on one brand. Don't know if they're going to move KO over to SmackDown. That'd be weird because he's having a really good feud with Jericho. But I think they can still have their matches even though they're on different brands. Because um, I forget who it was. I'll, I'll mention it if I see it in my notes. But um, oh yeah, it, it was Wyatt. Wyatt's on Raw now, but who's still talking about his WWE Championship match at Payback with, or not at Payback, uh, whenever, uh, with Orton for the title, so, you know, I guess they can have the matches still, even if they're on different brands, so, yeah, then, oh, sorry, hit the mic, and after that, uh, commentary, uh, you know, commentators tell us, oh, we're going to sit down, interview with Reigns, and blah, 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 and people booed the shit out of him. They come back from commercial, Kurt Angle is on the phone in his office telling someone it's going to be a great year when Sami Zayn rolls up. He says the anticipation is killing him, and he needs to know what he's going to be doing. Smackdown, Raw, blah, blah. Then Jinder comes in, and that sets up a match for them later. Then, after that... Da -da 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 -da. Then, oh wait, no, it wasn't Jinder, duh. It was The Miz, excuse me. But, uh, yeah. Yep, yeah, so. Sets up a match between Zayn and Miz for later. Then... After that, Big E does a deal, and New Day enter, uh, 
E. Biggie is holding Kofi, the fake Kofi, because of what happened to him over the weekend. He got, he broke his ankle, and it's basically a blow-up doll, so, yeah, really enjoyed their whole shtick. Like, I don't know what it was, but for a period of time, I was just getting sick of the New Day, but now I'm, like, easing back into him. Maybe because the Revival's there to save it, or whatever. But thank God the Revival finally got caught up. Because after that whole segment, uh, we say yeah, and we lead into a match between the New Day and the Revival. The Revival win again in a really good match. I'm really liking these matches. Can't wait to see if, um, like, what they'll do with the Revival because I really want to see them face the Hardys. That'd just be fantastic if Hardys stay on Raw. But who knows, Jeff might get drafted over to SmackDown or vice versa. And... Yeah, so the Revival win that, and yeah. Then, after that, uh, we come back from commercial. Neville is lurking backstage when an interview rolls up, uh, asking about Austin Aries being the number one contender again. The King says, oh, he's already proven that Austin Aries is not on the Neville level. He's worthless and a puny scum. And then enter TJ Perkins. No one cares about him. Neville just basically tells him, Oh, your career's trash now because you're the inaugural Cruiserweight champ. And then you lost it on your first defense. And all you do is dab and shit. And excuse me, I'm itching my ear. But yeah, all he does is dab and shit right now. And yeah, he's pretty trash. But... His character is trash, my opinion, and Neville's opinion, but his matches are really good. Character is trash, matches are really good. But I don't think we'll see him as Universal Champion or WWE Champion anytime soon. Ah, yeah, but then after that, Ares rolls up, banana in hand, incredulous at what Neville is saying. He may be wearing his sunglasses inside at night, but even he can see through Neville's lie. Then the king tells TJ to believe what he wants, but remember that one that only one man can give him a championship opportunity, so he's just trying to get him on uh, Neville's side so he can backstab him. Then we get another call up. And that's Kurt Hawkins, and he basically got squashed by the Big Show. Don't, didn't really give a shit about Kurt Hawkins. I was, I think I, yeah, we, uh, we went and got Panda Express, so there's how much I cared about that segment. But, um, also, just quick mention of some other call-ups. Uh, we got, we got Apollo Crews on Raw. Uh, Kurt Hawkins, and these are all off TV, but, um, it, yeah, they, they really don't matter. Yeah, so basically a squash match with, um, Hawkins and show. Then, after that, we got Austin Aries taking on TJ Perkins. Did not see this match, sadly. Because it took place when I was out getting food. But uh, TJ Perkin wins, surprisingly, with a small package. And that kind of pisses me off a bit, but whatever. Then after that, we have Seth Rollins walk backstage. Then he runs into Enzo and Cass and exchanges greetings. He'll be up after the break. What the fuck? Uh, I don't know. Then back from commercial, Seth makes his entrance. He uh, says it feels good to be out here with the fans, blah, blah, blah. Then, uh, uh, sorry. He's like, yeah, I destroyed the king at WrestleMania. And Seth woke up this morning after in more, wait, 
yeah, in more pain than he's ever been in. Physically, he has messed up, but mentally and emotionally, he was at peace. Because he knew that the king was slain, and blah, blah, and then uh, some mojo comes out to uh, take him out. He does, and uh, oh, oh, yeah, so basically, uh, he has a score to settle with some mojo. And, uh, some goals to finally get started, which is get his hand on the Universal Championship. Then, they roll the footage of Stephanie McMahon going through that table at WrestleMania. Then, Ron says he's probably not going to be Employee of the Month. But, more importantly, Steph is going to come back to work eventually and have to see him. And it's going to be, going to remind her every week of her failure and her husband's defeat. And after that, drags on, drags on, drags on, then enters Kurt Angle. He gets in the ring and tells Seth he's going to be straight up with them. It's true, Stephanie made it clear she wants him gone, and if they would have had this conversation two weeks ago, he would be gone. But at WrestleMania, he saw something, yeah, he never saw before, and he thought it was impressive, winning a gold medal with the broke freaking neck, blah, 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 and then Seth is a one-legged man that won an ass-kicking competition, and uh, Angle and him shake hands. That'd be a great match I would want to see Seth Rollins taking on Kurt Angle. But then, Samoa Joe blindsides Rollins. Angle tries to stop him, but to no avail, because he didn't even try. Like, I mean, he got in front of him, but it's like, you're really going to get in front of the Samoan Destroyer? Don't think that's going to do anything. But Seth Rollins stands tall by kicking uh, Samoa Joe out of the ring, and then KO runs in to help. Runs into an area back. Oh, never mind. Then, after that, we go backstage with KO, uh, ring into an interview with Charlie. He snorts when he's asked about the Superstar shakeup and says they can do what they want, but the cream always rises to the top, just like how we beat Chris Jericho. Then, uh, blah, blah, and surely he relished the opportunity to have some success Away from Owens, but you can't ask him because he's at home recuperating from the attack from Mania. And Ambrose can, oh, he's all like, then Ambrose can run around with the IC Championship all goofy and crazy as long as he remembers his place and remembers that Owens is a man here or he'll beat the hell out of him. And Kale basically just said, oh, the U.S. title is the main title on Raw because Brock will not be there ever because he's not going to be here this week, next week, the next week at Payback, which really pisses me off, but I already told you about that, so yeah. Then after the interview, Charlotte, Ma Charlotte Flair makes her entrance. She has a match against Nia Jax after the break. And back from the entrance, we have Nia Jax make her entrance. Charlotte Flair taking on Nia Jax. And this is a really good match. I really like this feud. But it looks like Charlotte's going to get moved to SmackDown. So we'll see what happens. Maybe they'll finish the feud at Payback and then she'll be full-time or something. But I don't know. But Nia Jax won that match with a uh, Samoan drop, dropping Charlotte on the ground. And yeah, and this is a match uh, where Jinder Mahal was in play, surprisingly. But the next match was Finn Balor taking on Jinder Mahal. And Jinder Mahal's probably going to get a wellness poly. Wellness, what, what's it called? 
wellness policy violation. Why couldn't I think of that after this? Because, I mean, that is no joke. Some serious roid usage. But, um, yeah. Uh, good match, I guess. I mean, Finn puts on good matches, and Ginger's okay. But after the match, this is the thing I loved. Uh, Bray Wyatt showed up on the Titan Tron. And says, oh, after I deal with Orton with our House of Horror match, I'm going to come to Raw. and I'm going to take care of you. Or, he didn't say that, but, I mean, it's basically going to happen. Excuse me, a Finn versus Wyatt feud. That's going to be awesome. Can't wait to see all that plays out. And, uh, see uh, if they fight for the championship or not. Hopefully... He wins it back at Backlash. I think that's it. I think it's the next SmackDown pay-per-view. But hopefully Wyatt wins it back. Because Randy is doing nothing with that title. People boo him when he had it. When he had it the Tuesday after Mania. I mean, I know it's the Tuesday after Mania. But still, if you're not getting the big pop, you... But you you did something wrong. And after that let's hold on. Then after that we had uh come back up from the commercial and hypes up the recaps the superstar shake up including uh, this is, these are the people that don't matter, but, uh, even before the show started, we had a superstar shakeup, and people on Raw now are Apollo Crews, Kalisto, Team of Beauty, and the Man Beast, Heath Slater and Rhino, oh man, those are great additions, because, you know, you're always gonna use Kalisto, wink, Quotes, just kidding, sarcasm. But maybe they can do something interesting with Apollo Crews. I feel like he may have a hidden heel talent like Neville did when they turned him heel. Maybe if you turn him heel, he'll be like the best thing ever. Or maybe he'll trip and fall his break it, and break his leg. But who knows. But then after that, we had the uh, Sami Zayn taking on Miz match. Really good match. Uh... We enjoyed everything in this match. Uh, Sam Zayn won by pinfall. And, yeah, really good match. Then, after that, we had Roman Reigns, uh, the, an the, uh, the announcement saying Roman Reigns will be interviewed after the break. Then he come back from break. And we're told that KO and Dean Ambrose will be wrestling in a champion versus champion match tonight. And after that, we get into the Roman Reigns interview. Michael starts to interview him. Blah, blah, blah. That's not the interesting part. The interesting part is when Braun Strowman kicked the shit out of Roman Reigns. He, oh man, he beat the shit out of him. He, he like, picked him up, threw him against the wall, slammed him on the equipment boxes. Uh, when he was in the stretcher, he pushed him off the ledge with the stretcher. He went, he fucking... He, he he went in the ambulance, punched Reigns, went out, closed the door, and then fucking tipped over the ambulance. Oh my god, Braun's awesome. I fucking love Braun. And, yeah, they basically screwed up with Roman. Because when Roman was getting his ass kicked, everybody was chanting, You deserved it, and or thank you, Braun. So... You need to rebrand Roman real fast and then just rework him. But oh my god. That was fucking that that was fucking sick. Cause he beat the shit out of Roman. So maybe he's gonna be written off for a couple weeks. That chant and him will not get over after being off T V for a couple weeks. But Whatever. Then, after that, we have, uh, we have, 
a good match between Shizaro, uh, the heart and the Hardys taking on Shining Stars and the club, and uh, someone drifting in the background, the Drifter. So the Drifter's on Raw. No, no uh, thing to announce that he's here. Real sad. I was expecting something, but nope. But yeah, so we had a match between those six men, or no, not six men, eight men, or no, sixteen man, or no, eight man, God, eight man tag match, and the winners were Shizaro and the Hardy Boys, winning by pinfall. Jeff Hardy did a Swanton bomb, Swanton bomb onto Epico. And Matt throws a delete out in their post celebration match, post match celebration, and yeah. Then after that, commentary hypes up our winners and their tag title match at payback between Shizaro, and yeah, I can't wait to see that. Then after that, we go in the back with Dana Brooke and exchanging words with Emma, and I don't really care. I mean, I like the women's division, but sometimes it bores me. And they're just talking about, oh, well, you used to be my friend. It's like, okay. Then after that, we come back from commercial, and then we see Sasha Banks make her entrance, and then invite Bailey out, and I thought this was going to be the Sasha Banks. He turned, there was a hint of it. Because Sasha's like, yeah, I know you're happy about your moment, but it's over. And I thought she was going to beat her up. And, but, nope. Because, uh, after that, uh, what happened? What happened? Bank says, trust me, it didn't go as she planned. But she wants to congratulate her for the biggest moment in her career. But that moment is over. And then Alexa Bliss comes. So Alexa Bliss is on Raw. No surprise. So we'll probably see Charlotte on SmackDown tomorrow. But who knows. But Alexa Bliss came out. That's awesome. Real good. She's on Raw now. And yeah. But then... Uh, Sasha, or, uh, Alexa's like, oh, uh, I'm two-time SmackDown Women's Champion, champion, and she's so excited that she can leave all that drama behind, but then Mick James comes out. Woohoo. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And then a fucking a bump of the night. Night Jax blindsided the fuck out of Mickey. Like, Mickey turned, and she just got... Bam, knocked out of her shoe. It's like that Roman bump from a couple weeks ago with him and Braun. Jesus, they hit hard. But, yeah. So, uh, uh, Nia Jax stands tall while hitting a Simone drop on Bailey, getting the women's title and raising it above her head. When is she ever going to win that title? I don't know. But, yeah. Then, after that, we had the Dean Ambrose and KO match. And a really good match. These guys can never put on a bad match. I mean, they can put on a good match in their sleep. But, yeah, the winner of that match was... Was, 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 was. Trying to find it was Dean Ambrose, he won with the Dirty Deeds, and then, yeah, and then, um, Chris Jericho comes out, attacks KO, uh, KO goes for a clothesline, Jericho ducks under, and then ends the night with a code breaker, baby, drink it in, man, and, yeah, real good episode of Raw, two real good weeks of WWE programming, I love that... You know, they might do this every year from now on, you know, in the summer, have a draft, and then after WrestleMania, have a superstar shakeup. And that'll be, that'll really improve the product, because, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. And those two weeks after WrestleMania are the most important for keeping new viewers, like, attached, I feel. 
but who knows what they'll do. But yeah, just awesome that they're doing this superstar shakeup. Wonder who we'll see on SmackDown because AJ wasn't on Raw, so is there gonna be some inner workings in that? Will AJ get moved to Raw tomorrow or what? Who knows? But yeah guys, that's gonna be it for another episode of Raw Results for April tenth, two thousand seventeen. If you guys did like and you wanna see more Please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. Also, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And if you want to see the rest of the series, please click play this link down below with the annotation on the screen at the end of the video. And as always, have a nice day, and I'll see y'all in the next one.